I want to share with you an absolutely incredible story about generosity that I have experienced in my own personal life. Welcome back, everybody. Today is the first Monday of the first week of Lent. And perhaps you have started off Lent with a bang and you had all these Lenten resolutions and we're not even in to a full week yet from Ash Wednesday, but you've fallen flat on your face with your Lenten resolutions. And if that's you and you feel a little discouraged, I got a quote for you. If other efforts in the past have been unsuccessful or have not entirely reached the goal, this is no reason for discouragement. So if you're discouraged, stop it. (laughs) (laughs) The Christian life is a life of new beginnings. Every moment, every day is a chance for a new beginning. And I just want to encourage you with that in case you feel a little bit discouraged today. You know, it's also a good reminder that um, Lent is a penitential time. And so the church asks us to get ourselves to confession. And if we are very serious about our growth and holiness, we should be getting to to confession regularly. So if you have uh, no plans yet, I would say make some plans to get to confession. What measure of love and grace must we attain? That depends primarily upon God's design on our soul and then on our cooperation. Now on our part, the secret of reaching the goal is never to stop. So this actually, when I read this, it made me think a lot of um, just, you know, I do a lot of fitness. Um, I've been doing exercise for like the last 10 years. And often they'll say that, like, if you want to reach your goal, just don't ever stop. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep going. And I feel like that's the same in the in the faith life. Like we just have to keep pursuing the goal. And it's not perfection necessarily that we're seeking, but progress, right? Yeah, and Father Gabriel brings up the question, what degree of grace or love might we aim at attaining? He says, what measure of love and grace must we attain? Like, what's the goal? How high do we have to strive for? Uh, He says later that that question is maybe an inadequate question because, one, God is worthy of everything that we can give him. So if we ever have this particular goal in mind of this is exactly how my life should look and now I've arrived and i am reached a level of holiness and I can't grow anymore, we're likely very mistaken. But understand if we ever do reach that point of maxing out, not saying that's (laughs) God is still infinitely worthy of more. So that's one reason he says not to stop. The second reason he says not to stop is, he says, how do you know when you've arrived at that point? Mm. And if you look at the lives of the saints, you don't find one that says, I've arrived. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm all maxed out on holiness. Saints don't say that. They are continuously pursuing Jesus. They would never assume that of themselves. And so we should never assume that of ourselves and always strive to become more like Christ in everything. And sometimes when we're seeking Jesus in union with him, a little lie creeps into our minds and it goes something like this. If I do this for Jesus, might he shortchange me? And there is an unhealthy attachment to our life sometimes. And we're thinking thinking that by giving up a certain aspect of our life over to Jesus that we are going to be shortchanged, worse off, and that we're better off hanging on Mm-hmm. to that thing or that way of life that we have grown accustomed to. But the nature of love is this. Love cannot be outdone in generosity. God cannot be outdone. You give him a little, he gives more. So the little scraps that we give to Jesus, he gives us what? A treasure in return. I want to share with you an absolutely incredible story about generosity that I have experienced in my own personal life been doing ministry, full-time ministry for over 20 years. And way back in the early part of my ministry days, we're doing these youth retreats across Western Canada. And at the very beginning, we had absolutely no resources, no money, no vehicles, and we're doing all these events. So my team would travel to a small little towns and we would do these youth events, but we'd travel in different vehicles and everyone would take different pieces of equipment, like sound equipment to go to these events. And one day I'm like, I said, Lord, it'd just be so nice if we had a van so that we could travel together and minister to these young people. Together, we, would, we were driving hours and hours, and we were always doing it separately. Shortly after this prayer, a lady calls me up 
I knew her of her. I didn't know her that well. And she says, Ken, I got this van. It kind of sits around. If you ever want to borrow it to, to take all your team and your equipment, you can borrow it anytime. I'm like, wow, answer to prayer. That's generous of her. So the very first time that we borrowed her van, we took off on an eight-hour drive. And when we get to this community, we're, we are billeted in different houses. And I, I go to my house, and then another guy on team takes the van, and he drives to another house. Well, in the morning, he comes back to me, and he's, like, really uh, upset. And uh, he's like, uh, Ken, I crashed the van. What? You crashed a van? It's not even our van. This lady lends us her van and we crash it. I'm like, okay, uh, we'll figure it out. So we finish up the van to drive back to our city. And then I give her a call and I says, um, you know, your van, we, we had a little accident. And the one of the drivers crashed into a snowbank and ripped up the front bumper. And I said, we'll pay for it. Um, I'm really sorry. I didn't know how we were going to pay for it because we had no money. <laughs> that was a big problem. <laughs> but I said we would, and I thought, well, we'll try. And her response was, well, we'll see. Don't worry about it. Ba basically, it was, we'll see. Don't worry about it. I'm like, what does that mean? Anyways, give her back the van. A week goes by. I am I did another youth event. I'm coming home at night, and I pull into our house where I'm staying, and there's this van parked in our driveway. And I'm like, what's this van doing here? A different van. I go up to my room and there's a note from this lady. And in the note, she's explaining that she's now giving me a new van, a different van. I'm like, what? We crash her van and now she gives us a new one. <laughs> like, what kind of generosity is that? It was so humbling, but even more humbling to realize where she got the money from. Her son, when he was little, got cancer and died. And there was a small life insurance policy on her son. And she took some of that money and used it to buy this van. And I was extremely humbled by this woman's generosity. We crash her van. Justice says we should pay for it. And she goes above and beyond in generosity, giving us a van. The only reason she had the money was because of the loss of her son. I, I can't tell you what a, how moved I was by this act of love. Yet how much more Jesus does for us. The vehicle by which he brings us to heaven is grace. And he wins grace for us by offering his life. And what do we do with this grace? Do we complain about it? Oh, I don't like my life. Like the van. Oh, I wish I had bigger tires and chrome on the sides. And Would have it been appropriate for me to complain about the van at that point, knowing what I know and what I've shared with you? Absolutely not. And is there any reason for us to complain about our life and the grace God gives us, considering the cost that it's taken him to give us this great grace, this vehicle to heaven? There should be no complaint upon our lips. And so when it comes to surrendering our life over to Jesus, we have to remember we could never be outdone in generosity. Friends, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.